The setting of cyberpunk edge runners is one that simply does not accommodate dreams. From David's mom, to Maine, to the corporations hoisting duties upon the next generations just to get a step ahead, and even to David himself by the end. The world is rough, and harsh, and cruel, with little to no respite and far too much futility to give encouragement for belief. And as a result, people are selfish. People often die with their own dreams unfulfilled whilst living for themselves through living for and through others. A lot of times, the most they can do is pass the torch of their heart and sentiment on before they die, for others to bear it and carry on their will, and in many ways, the dreams they themselves could never reach. That's what David and up doing, for his mom and for Maine, regardless of whether or not they intended this. And in the end, nearly everyone around him died, some would say in futile ways, scratching and clawing their way into an early grave without being able to achieve what they would have loved to achieve. It's grim, it's upsetting, it's horrifying. But these people die knowing that they lived standing for something. It is the sad state of the world that people hoist their hopes on others vicariously, cursing the youth into living with obligation. That's a big part of why this world is so broken, and it is a symptom of something pathological. But to move the pin just that little bit further, to ensure that in the end, at least this world is capable of fulfilling some dreams, our characters sacrifice life and limb and drive themselves insane with cyberpsychosis and do all manner of unspeakable things just to live to fight another day. And if they can't, they are proud to ensure that those who follow them can dream. David never really got to live a life in service of anything he himself yearned for. He lived in honor of a mother who supported and loved him but may have lived through him, and of a boss whose memory forced its way into his psyche. After Gloria died, he began wearing her jacket, and after Maine died, he bulked up, cyberized, and took on his old boss's role and appearance. Visually and in spirit, he found his identity and motive through others and through the compassion he felt in taking on these lofty fantasies. He never really had a chance to form concrete dreams of his own outside of living in the moment and sharing beautiful times with those around him. And so that's why he decided to live for other people altruistically. For his memories, for the departed, for Lucy. Some would call this one-minded recklessness ironically selfish for how he ignored all the cries to the contrary, but he made his decision and died in service of his tragic ideal. It's overwhelmingly sad that he was forced to do this, but in the end, he had no regrets whatsoever and continued this seemingly never-ending torch pass to the one he loved most, even facing oblivion with a smile. And for him, his dreams, his hopes, and his love, and for all those that pass their hopes on to him, Lucy embraces the endless horizon with David's spirit with her and understands that she would be doing all of this a disservice if she didn't live life with all that she has, taking on the dream she told him all that time ago of leaving Night City behind for the moon. As I said, it is dark, it's morbid, it makes you feel horrible, and there is needless death. But there is always, always that glimpse of light. And that is enough for salvation, for the departed, and for those who remain to pick up the pieces. Many thanks for watching.